Today's gospel reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. I invite you to stand if you're an evil in honor of the gospel. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for, great, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. So, my, my sermon is entitled, Who's Blessed? And it can be a question of who's blessed. But it can be also a who's blessed? Because <laughs> every time I've been poor, every time I've been thirsty, every time I've been hungry for righteousness, I didn't feel blessed. I felt something else. <laughs> but you are blessed when you don't feel blessed. When you're poor, when you're mourning, when you're meek, and when you are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, you are blessed. It doesn't feel like a blessing. Anyone been poor? You had some tough days <laughs> when you didn't know where your next meal was coming from. There was no money for rent or groceries. I remember those days. I remember being four months late for my, 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 my rent. <laughs> I had already talked to the college apartment manager. The grant is coming. <laughs> it's just late. When it finally came four months late, I had money to pay the rent, all my late charges, and $20 for groceries. It was exactly what I needed. <laughs> Prayers answered. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a terrible, terrible feeling to be broke. But it's also even more when you're poor in spirit. You're not just broke. It's invaded the physical to the spiritual, and you are depressed, you have no hope, you don't feel like you can get out. It's you, church, who feel down and out, and like there's no hope, that Jesus calls blessed. It's you, church, when you have such a great loss, that the grief in your heart is overflowing and that's all you can talk about and think about. <coughs> that Jesus says, you are blessed and you will be comforted. Amen? Amen. Amen. I, I met a man yesterday uh, who came to our evening service and he's going blind. His cataracts have gotten to such a point where everything is just a blur. And he's having his surgery on Wednesday. And he's so grateful, but he says, since I got these cataracts, spiritually I've been so much stronger as I'm having to lean on God and grow in faith. Jesus is all I have right now. And he says, you know, I wouldn't wish these cataracts on anyone, but I've really grown during this season. It, I should
shared once before my, my first day of uh, Army training, I went to boot camp and the day before we started, we decided to work out and on a slow wind sprint, I turned and pushed off and I heard something pop in my foot. <coughs> And I couldn't walk. <laughs> I was about to have to take a PT test. I was learning to march. <laughs> and we were running every other day. I said, Jesus, why now? <laughs> and I realized at the end of that time, a few months later, I had gone to boot camp thinking, I'm in good shape and I have no worries. But by the time I left, I was completely dependent on God. And I knew, I knew that Jesus was my only way that I got through that time. This is the blessing of the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit are dependent. They know there's no other way. They know God is their own. Can you guess anybody where the evangelical church is growing the fastest? Africa. Africa. Good guess. Well, I just checked it today. Um, and according to um, the poll, the church is growing the fastest at a rate of 19.6% annually in Iran. In Iran, where the penalty for conversion is death, where proselytization, evangelism is a capital offense, Iran is the fastest growing evangelical church in the world. And if you think about almost 20% growth, what would happen here? If we grew at the rate of 20% or even 10%, what do you think a bigger sanctuary next year? Right? Um, but you know what? They're not a comfortable church in a nice building. They're an underground church that is secretly reaching out one person at a time and sharing who Jesus is and the means to salvation. This is what it means to be rich even though you're poor in spirit. <coughs> Number two on the list, Afghanistan. Same sort of conditions. <coughs> Over 16% growth annually is a church that is beaten up, that has suffered. This under ISIS only the real Christians stay, and the church is stronger today. If you're not willing to die for your faith, you're not part of the church in Afghanistan. <coughs> no wonder they're growing. These people are serious about their faith in Christ. Amen? Amen. But... Faith is grown there because these people say, <laughs> Iranian woman who can't even talk to a man on the street, they say, they arrest me, it's just 50 years in prison. What's that compared to eternity with my Savior? See, they're weighing the cost. They know who they're living for. And because they're not trapped by the trappings of this world, they're able to live 100% for the Lord. When I, when I think about the Beatitudes, it reminds me that God is looking up from up there on us down here. And everything we think looks backwards. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. That all seems backwards to us. Unless you take an eternal perspective. 
unless you take a perspective from God's perspective up in heaven. And you can see the beginning and the end of time, and you can see the fruit of your labors. And it's obvious. Yes, the poor are blessed. Yes, the humble. Jesus said it simply in Matthew 20, the last shall be first. And the first shall be last. Amen? Amen. So I'm supposed to answer a question this week. Um, what is the path to salvation? How can I be a Christian? How can I be saved? And let me be honest with you. You can't just strap to be poor and take away all your money and be saved. You can't just purposely have people die in your life and mourn and be saved. No. You can't just hunger and thirst. That has to happen within you. But let me read this passage over and I want you to see Jesus in this. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you, falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Jesus is the one who was falsely accused and persecuted for righteousness' sake. Jesus was the one who was poor in spirit, though he was God. He became a homeless wanderer, preaching and teaching. Blessed are those who mourn. Christ mourns for the sinner and calls all to be redeemed by his blood. Amen? Amen. When I was in college, I remember uh, there was a group of semi-Christians who were going around, they were exploding around the nation, and uh, they caught me on the grass sitting by myself reading, and they asked me if I wanted to join them in the Bible study, and I was like, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and they taught me from the scriptures that Christians are to be fruitful. And they told me to my face, well, if you haven't made any other Christians, you're not being fruitful, you must not really be a Christian. You need to come to our church and be saved. And, well, the, the thief on the cross who said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom, I don't think he made any disciples. <laughs> and they got really mad. Um, <laughs>
but he heard a little group of Moravian Christians singing hymns and praying in a total peace in the storm. He said, I need what they have. I have faith. But they have a faith that abides with them even in the storm where death is imminent. I want that kind of faith. You don't work for faith. It comes to you. It's a gift from God. I'll talk more about that next week. <laughs> but Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. You see, these Beatitudes are who Jesus is. When we have Christ, we'll have these attitudes in our hearts. When we have Christ, we have salvation. And we can be assured that our place in heaven. It's not because we're a saint and we're good and we do Mother Teresa things everywhere. It's because he is good. And he's been good in our place. All that Jesus asks of us, it's like I told the kids last week, repent, <laughs> repent, turn from your sins, confess your evil, and receive forgiveness from the Lord who offers it freely, who bled and died in our place, that we might go free. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is all he asks. Today, I invite you to receive Christ. And we're going to do it right here at the communion table. As we break bread, remembering that Jesus' body was broken for us. As we share the cup of life where Jesus' blood was poured out. And when you receive the bread and the wine, symbolically you receive Jesus Christ himself. You're saying yes to the Lord. I confess my sin. I receive your grace. I want to be yours, Lord. This is the way of salvation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you knew <coughs> that we could never be good enough. And you made a way. Lord, we thank you for your son who paid all the price. We pray that you would give us clean hearts and heads at this time through his blood and make us pure in your sight. We thank you that Jesus is all that we need. And we give you ourselves in Jesus' name.